Hi, everyone. It's Candace Craw Goldman from quantumhealers.com back again with another what a great question. And this particular episode, this series is sometimes about questions, but sometimes it's about a little bit of advice, of course, uh, that isn't exactly posed as a question. This came from a BQH practitioner, and I got a text this time, and we're just going to go right to the text, and I'm going to read it to you. I hope you don't mind me taking a minute to share my session struggle from today. I know there will be sessions like this, but I was so looking forward to helping this person experience a dreamy session today. This guy yawned through the interview over and over, went pee like seven times and had an extremely hard time staying focused on anything. And when he started snoring during the induction, I started trying not to feel a huge disappointment. That's key right there. I sat for a while after calling his name, raising my voice a bit, which was the correct thing to do, closing my notebook a little louder, moving my water glass, making sure to set it down with just a smidge of noise. And then it wasn't quiet until, oh no, and then it wasn't until I sat quiet that he finally snored and woke himself up. <laughs> the song, Mama Said There'd Be Days Like This, came to mind and I just changed the lyrics to Candace Said There'd Be Days Like This. And if you do this work, there will be, absolutely. So she almost canceled, she said, because of a huge issue with her um, guest bathroom being out of commission. But um, she kept the session anyway. And she said a, a couple other things and said, I'm sure through countless sessions you've done, there have been far worse in your life. So I shouldn't complain. So I think she just wanted to get that off her chest. Of course, she could have done that on our support forum. And I always encourage our practitioners to do that because my response would probably come from a myriad of other practitioners, but this is what I want to talk about. So she says the, the client yawned all those times and got up to pee all those times. Well, these are terrific signs. These are terrific signs of kind of a pre-induction state. This is a pre-hypnosis state. This is a relaxed state, obviously, but it's also a releasing state. So in a quantum healing session, no matter what kind it is, if it's QHHT, BQH, or some other variety of this kind of work, much work is done in the interview portion of the session. Much work is done when you are talking about what you're there to work on what your goals are, all of that work is done there. It's not really a, we're going to talk and then we're going to have magic in the session. The magic goes all the way through. It just does. It really does. And I can count session after session after session where some of the more obvious shifts happen in the first part. And the second part could just be a cherry on the cake or maybe not even anything really to talk about. We have been trained from years and years of wonderful session stories and videos that we see now on YouTube. But, you know, of course, starting with Dolores Cannon's books, the kinds of sessions that made chapters in those books were terrific stories. There were lots of things going on. There was a plot line. There was a storyline. There was something happening. And this is why humans, this is why people like us love these books so much. It's a storyline, right? But if you take a step back and you ask yourself, why am I doing this work? What's the goal of this work? Well, it's really to help the client, right? So stories they're great and sometimes they can really illustrate much of what is possible and all the potential of quantum healing. But we're not there to capture a story. We're here, we're there to help the client. So after getting that text, I thought about doing just a video just like this and, and talking about it in this way and it, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I'm talking about the yawning and the peeing and all of this. And I suspect, I absolutely suspect that that client 
had a much better outcome, whether or not she knows it or not, than it may typically have manifested for her to notice or for there to be words attached to it or anything like that. And from the information that we have so far, the thing to take, the lesson to take when looking at this situation is the practitioner is the one who's disappointed here in the communication, right? She's disappointed that he didn't have a dreamy session. And the only way that disappointment can exist really anywhere is if one has expectations. The practitioner had expectations. Now, we caution both client and practitioner to have temper their expectations. But you're human, both of you are human, and you're gonna have some kinds of some kind of expectations, even if you say, I don't have any expectations. Well, that's a noble goal, but you still are gonna have expectations of some kind, you just are. But tempering them is a good plan. But the disappointment there, of course, comes from the practitioner knowing what's possible with this work and seeing the presentation of all of those things as, you know, it didn't work, it didn't help, he didn't have a dreamy session, and she feels disappointed for herself, for him, for the whole process, right? So we're going to stop the video right now, and I'm going to pick up the phone, and I'm actually going to call this practitioner, and I'm going to get the rest of the story. Be back shortly. Okay, so we're back and I had a nice conversation with the practitioner. So my first question to the practitioner was, what was the intention set for the session? As most of you know, or I hope you might know, uh, BQH works with really working on several different things, not just going into a session willy-nilly, even with goals and lists and things like that, but actually taking time to craft something called an intention for a session it has been extraordinarily helpful for hundreds, thousands of sessions and hundreds and many thousands of BQH practitioners now after these years. So what was the intention for the session? And um, she came back saying that he, he didn't quite know where he belonged. And I didn't, um, I didn't really understand what she meant. That That's pretty vague. And I had her explain a little bit more. And, and this is how she explained it. She said, well, he had um, issues in all areas of his life, his relationships, his job, um, his personal relationships just with friends. And um, But this one intrigued me. He said he had thought that he was rather paranormal um, <sighs> or he had paranormal experiences when he was younger. He had he was in touch with a part of himself that was a little more intuitive, that had a little more connection to other realms and, and some more magic in his life. And he felt like he was no longer in touch with that part of himself, that greater part of himself, and that he felt a little bit like two people. And I thought that was really interesting. That phrase right there was really interesting. One might jump to multiple personalities, but that's not where I went. A lot of people can feel their higher self, right? You know, their greater self, their greater aspect, their soul aspect as kind of separate from them and then their human personality. And they can feel like that's one in two people. So I focused on that and we talked about it a little bit. And um, so that was pretty interesting. Then my next question to her was, well, did anything at all happen in the session, right? Basically, she said he went to sleep and I said, well, what happened? And she said he sat up and I started asking him questions like, what's the last thing you remember? And I said, well, why did you ask him that? And I also, and she said, well, I wanted to know what I could do better. I wanted to know what he could remember so that he could put it all together. All of that is head stuff. All of that is analytical stuff. And all of that is back to the story stuff. Again, yes, we do work in that. I mean, this is how we communicate. So there is you know, there's a way of thinking about how, how we can talk about what happened in there. But I found myself explaining to the practitioner, I don't know that I've ever used this analogy before, but it, it seemed to work when I was talking to her. I said, you know what? So the whole session was basically silent. And she said, yes. I said, well, what, let's think of it this way. What if what was really happening in the experience with this man was a prayer, right? Um, this man sitting in prayer and actually inviting this practitioner 
to facilitate and hold space for this interaction between, you know, this man and a greater power, whether it's himself or um, his team or source or God, but basically inviting her to a prayer. I said, it's like you had a table and the man and this greater aspect of himself came to the table. You set the table, you invited them in, and then you put earplugs in, or you had uh, head muffs, you know, earmuffs over your ears. And then the conversation or any, any interaction between the two of them was unheard by you for sure. And maybe even by him, right? I am sure that something happened. And I then I asked more questions. And I said, what did he say to you um, later, if anything? And she said, well, he did contact her and he did say he felt better. He felt lighter, but he felt very, very tired. And then the practitioner shared this. She said she was also very, very tired. And I thought that was remarkable. And I started talking to her about this. And then my own intuition sort of stepped in. And I imagined that this man had like built like a brick wall like that in his psyche, in his ass, in his consciousness, right? He he was more connected to his higher self. He was more connected to that greater portion of himself uh, when he was younger. And then he and society and all of the things that happened, you know, he kind of made a brick wall between the two of them. And here was the practitioner who was endeavoring to, um, you know, make these connections and have some communication like that. But in this session, uh, there wasn't a lot of words back, but I said, well, the, the tiredness to me is, is indicative that you both did a lot of energy work. The practitioner holding the space and the client breaking down a wall. I said, if you could peek into his head, maybe you could see that where there once was this solid brick wall, it's starting to crumble so that he can speak to this higher aspect of himself. And then I talked a little bit about this whole idea of, I know that we all love Dolores Cannon and other people who do this type of work because of their stories. I mean, Allison Coe, Ella Wyman, there's others who do this fantastic work that we love to read their stories. We love to hear their outcomes, right? That's great. But again, what's the real, real goal here? The goal is a better life. The goal is healing. The goal is expansion. The goal is that the client makes strides that becomes a new version of themselves, right? And I've become the opposite in so many ways. Some of my very, very favorite sessions ever are the ones where, quote unquote, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Because during these nothing happen, no story sessions, to me, it's like proof. It's like proof that even just showing up, just showing up can make an effect on your life. And I stand by that. Um, I wrote some notes, but I think I went through them all. What do you think? Have you ever had a session where nothing happened, whether you're the practitioner or the client? I'd sure like to hear about it. But again, disappointment, expectations, think about that a little bit. Some clients have those dreamy sessions and then they don't make changes in their lives and they don't actually result in the manifestation of the healing that energetically we tried to provide for them, right? So you have to put all of this stuff into perspective. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. If you are a quantum healer of any kind, an energy worker, a life coach, anybody who wants to help others in this way, be of service to others in this way, you're welcome to join us at quantumhealers.com. We are a guru-free community and we provide directory listings support and opportunities for expansion in your own world with marketing and such. And if you are looking for anybody to help you in a new way, an alternative healer of any kind, please visit us at quantumhealers.com. Thanks so much. Till next time. See ya. Bye for now.